Welcome to the Kill the Lion podcast. I'm your host, Cody Clark. We have a lovely show for you today. Mason Carter is here. You know him from Joel Haver's YouTube shorts. They've done a lot of those together. They also made a movie, Forget About Everything for a While. It's on YouTube. It's 60 minutes. It's fantastic. Can't wait to talk to Mason. Super talented guy. Before we begin, if you like the show, if you like the films I make, $2 per month. KillTheLionFilms.com. Throw your support my way. That's all it takes. You keep the show afloat, you keep the film studio afloat. And now, Mason Carter. All right, Mason, good to talk to you. Yeah, hey, what's up, Cody? So I watched Forget About Everything for a while last night again. I, I hadn't seen it since it came out. It really held up. It's it's a wonderful film. I like it even more than I did back then, and I loved it back then. Have you revisited that movie at all recently? Um, how many times have you seen it? It's it's a it's a wonderful film. It just really really works. You made it in six days. I think two weeks start to finish as far as editing and shooting. It was a really quick piece, but I think it's a really effective film. Yeah, thank you. Um, with Joel's channel kind of blowing up, I've I've kind of just gone back and watched the old stuff, seeing people comment on stuff, and I mean all the views that have pretty much came out of nowhere. So yeah, I've I've gone back and looked at some old videos, but I've definitely gone back and and looked at that because that was kind of a a special thing, and it was always a, a plan that me and Joel had. We weren't sure what we were going to do, when we were going to do it, but we we were like, well, we want to go somewhere, we want to film something, and we want to make it sure it's a feature and like something long form. So we went down at the start of quarantine. Literally the first week when they shut down the city and went down to South Carolina, filmed it. And I, I agree. I think, I think it's, um, and, and for people to come watch it and after a year and now it's got over, I think a hundred thousand views. I mean, tr- truly, I never thought it'd have that much. So I'm, I'm just happy to see that people like it because I, me and Joel really enjoyed filming it and, you know, when you do things improv, sometimes it just kind of fall into place. And I think that was a really good example of things just kind of falling into place. Yeah, it's a fully improvised film. And I believe it's the first what you could term a COVID feature film. You know, you, you guys got out there pretty much right away and made a film. And that was that was very inspiring for me and my girlfriend, Chloe. We then you know, we're like, we got to make something together. We made Attack of the Giant Blurry Finger, much different movie from uh, Forget About Everything for a while, a lot campier, a lot sillier. But it was it was this inspiring thing of like, I want to see what happens when me and somebody else just kind of improvise an entire feature film, which is what we did together. And it's it's a very intimate thing. You know, it's 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 just you and another person. And it's it's the kind of thing where, like, if you got an email out of the blue from, like, a complete stranger and was like, hey, come down to South Carolina with me and we'll just be in an empty house together and we'll make a movie, you know, you might be like, oh, my God, who's this weirdo? But if it's your friend or if it's your girlfriend or whatever, you can tap into this this intimacy and this respect and this love for each other and you, you can make something really great. How did you... Uh, and Joel meet come together. How long have you been friends? I don't know the uh, lineage there. So I met Joel through another uh, one of our friends, Avery Duncan. He went to Pratt with Joel, and I think they roomed together uh, for a, a while and stuff. So I a couple of years ago I was in New Jersey, just like fresh into there, fresh into Jersey, trying to get into the acting game and something I've always wanted to do. So I, I, I was like looking for stuff on backstage and, and I've, I found this, it was a short film that, and it was supposed to be his Avery's like thesis film for his senior year, I think. And so we, we filmed, we I auditioned for that, got it. And then about a year later is when I fi- I was doing another short film with Avery and then Joel showed up one day and was helping out with that project. And so met Joel, talked about it. And that's when I was 
looking i saw like his um oh what was it that i'm gonna be famous stuff on youtube and checked out all that and i was like man this this guy's really doing something different so obviously right from the jump before even met, meeting joel i wanted to get involved and in, somehow in some aspect and thankfully i was able to work on i've worked on numerous short films with him and we finally made a feature which is one of one of my big goals, but I think one of his goals too, because that's what he does as well. So you mentioned you wanted to be an actor. Um, did Joel kind of bring out, you know, wanting to make films and, and, and thinking about being a filmmaker? Is that something you wanted to do as well? Yeah, I always, I always wanted to be, and I just love films in general. So like, and anything, I'm happy, like, I've done some editing work, like, when I was in high school, I had a friend group that we made, like, short films, kind of like Joel does, and so I was always kind of involved in it, and, but more of the acting part of it, but obviously, help uh, working with Joel, and I, I wanted to do it, but I, you know, it's it's kind of a whole different beast when you start directing, and finding shots and stuff. And I don't have any of that technical ability. Everything I've done is kind of hands-on. So it, it was good. It was good to learn from somebody who has that, uh, his take, like he has a film degree. Joel has got a film degree. So he's got all that background knowledge. And then plus the, the way he makes films is improv. And, you know, I, I always loved doing improv and yeah, I mean, and, and hopefully I can continue to not just act, but like be a, a filmmaker and direct and, and, and do more stuff like we were able to do uh, with Forget About Everything for a while. So one of your uh, shorts together that's, that's been very successful was, I believe, his first absinthe short, the, um, where you're like the new galactic emperor. I think that was one of the first, if not the first. Now, when, when he did that, Initially, of course, it was just something you throw up online, and since then, all the Epson stuff has has blown up. What was your reaction to it when you first did it? What was it like to record it, and uh, you know, then see the finished product and all that? Yeah, that was actually one something because I've never been a part of like any animation stuff, and that was the first short film that Joel did. He made a music video for one of his songs. And absinthe, and I was like, "Wow, that's really cool! Like, we're gonna have to try to try to do something like that." And and one of our goals back then was like, we just kept making short films that we were trying to make a really short one, like under a minute. I think that one's around a minute or so. And so we were like, "Yeah, well, let's let's just try to do something." Like, came up with the idea. I don't really remember what the idea was exactly, but just sat down and I started filming, and he's like. And with Epson, you kind of can't move around a lot. So that, w that was kind of, it's kind of tough trying to do all that and not move your face or like not move your arms. But I mean, the way, the way it looks, the way it's been received, uh, it's uh, a pleasant, pleasant uh, thing. Yeah, it really changes the game. It really opens up animation for for a lot of people that that wouldn't be a part of it otherwise I've, I've been seeing you know people throwing stuff together and and a lot of it's in its early stages a lot of people are just figuring out the uh the software just like anybody would if it was a new software and but i i think it's i think in a couple of years it's going to be like this kind of thing that's just going to change the animation landscape as a whole for sure yeah i i agree i, I mean when you when you hear animation and stuff you just you always hear like the countless hours and stuff it takes and it still takes a long time but like for that to be so hands-on and available for anybody and i think that program's free so i mean ab absolutely fantastic so one of the other shorts you guys do uh, you know I, I i love these ones i don't know how popular they are or if they've taken off since but the uh, the dad shorts that you do together <laughs> yeah and they feel like very almost inside jokey. They feel like you guys are both drawing from something that you've seen out in the wild. 
Can you talk to me about the genesis of those shorts where you just play dads and you're you're either arriving somewhere or you know somebody's showing up at the other one's house or whatever but it's just it, it's very funny stuff it's a very it's a specific type of dad it's not a generic dad it it's it's very um uh, very specific but tell me about that idea yeah so i think when, with one of our ideas we were just like man it'd be fun to do some like real character acting um and i, I think that's how it came apart we were thinking like oh it'd be fun to play some dads or uh, we were like oh what do dads do like oh they're always telling you to do something or they're always trying to do something but they never end up doing it and some stuff like that so that was that was our first film where we were moving furniture and we end up just complaining about all of our ailments and we never ended up moving a piece of furniture at all so but yeah it, it's the, it was the character acting part that like where we could really like dress up and put on the fake mustache and and put in the pillows make our stomachs look big and so i think that that was the inspiration we just wanted to like do some like serious character acting which was, was a lot of fun i think that was me and Joel's for a long time our favorite videos cuz we just got to go off the rails with whatever and you went uh, very much off the rails together with Italian Movers which uh, Italian Movers is one of my favorites. I don't know how many views it has now. It usually it was hovering around like a thousand, but that's just it. It's just a perfect little movie. That was I feel like that was maybe one of the first ones I saw Jules when I met him. But it's just so ridiculous, and the subtitles just having nothing to do with what you're saying and stuff. It was just it's just a perfect thing. It seems like when you two get together, you want to like move stuff. Yeah, you know, there's <laughs> that, that's like just something you keep coming back to, bringing stuff somewhere. It seems to be a vehicle for comedy. Yeah, that was our that was the actual the first video me and Joel ever made together, the uh, Italian boomers, and and that, and that was something. The first day I met him in person, that's something we would like. I think he already had an idea for it, and then we just kind of. And then we just met up and made it. So it was, that's where it all started, basically. Yeah, it's it's preposterous. It's, <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen it, they they absolutely need to. Also, because of course, now learning its history, because it's the first one you guys did together. Right, right. Yeah, and, and all those um, all the subtitles and stuff. That was all Joel's idea. That was that wasn't like a idea. I think he had until he was editing it, which was a good touch. So one of your most successful uh, live action videos together is the drunkest guy at the party answers the door. And I have to say, I think I've told you this before. You are one of the best actors at playing drunk I've ever seen in my life. And I mean, I'm including like prestige Hollywood stuff. I'm including like, you know, top of, you know, the craft stuff. Like, I, I think the master is really good at that. I, I, I think that's mm -hmm. a good movie as far as you know, a drunk character. I think Joaquin Phoenix is great in that. But there is something that you tap into, especially in Drunkest Guy Answers the Door, that's just so familiar, so accurate. Can you tell me about playing drunk? Are you drunk when you do it? Are you tapping into the feeling? Are you tapping into guys you met? What What's what's coming out of you there? Well, uh, I think for the, for the drunkest guy, I think, we did that right before we went down to South Carolina and made forget about everything. And that was before quarantine and all that. But I was I was uh, I was in a fraternity, and so I definitely spent a lot of time partying on the weekends and stuff. So I got to see drunk people like three to four times a week when I was in college for a few years. So. That that was I kind of just took you know uh, a little bit of everybody that I was friends with, everybody that I met, and and I wasn't drunk for that one. I, I think for forget everything for a while, I, I was drunk at some of those scenes, but for that uh, the short, I was I don't think I had anything to drink for that one. So that was that was uh, it. You know. Playing drunk is is kind of tough because you don't want to overdo it, and so I, I think I kind of walked the line really well there. If, if 
since since I've got a lot of compliments on on all that junk acting. Yeah, it's it's very realistic, even though it's over the top. It's it's uh, we we've all encountered that guy at some point. Exactly the 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 multiple handshakes and all that. Yeah, I I, I saw a lot of it in uh, in college and maybe even was was that guy from time to time. So I was I was all too familiar. So you mentioned, uh, you know, making forget about everything for a while. You, some of the scenes you were drunk, some of them you weren't. Uh, do you remember the uh, what it was like to act while inebriated? Is is it something you would want to do again? Or is it something that was special for the project? You know, it's 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 always like a fine line to ride there because you know I I remember Sasha Baron Cohen talking about when he did uh, some Borat stuff. There was one where he did he was at like a wine vineyard and he got like super duper drunk like drunker than he's ever been in his entire life and he was like scared like every all the crew were like scared to like when like I think he passed out or something they were scared that when he came to he wouldn't be in the Borat character anymore or whatever but he you know he he came back in character you know he <laughs> It's it's obviously it's a you know it's a dangerous territory to play around with, but how did how did that go with uh, you know being actually inebriated? You know, I, I don't think it made being drunk and acting drunk. I don't think it made it any easier because then you kind of just because you when you're inebriated and you've had a little bit to drink, you kind of forget what is going on in front of you. You kind of lose sight of. Uh, the full reality. It, I, honestly, I, I think it was a little bit harder to act drunk while being drunk, and that, I, I don't know if that makes any sense because it. I don't think it does even to me. But I, it's just kind of the way it was. But it, it was definitely fun because we. It was like a little vacation, and so uh, it was a little film vacation. So I I, I was uh, enjoying myself as much as I could. Yeah, it's it's weird how like reality can seem less real than acting or, or art or something like that. Like pretending to be drunk can come across as more real as a drunk person than actually being drunk on camera. It's like Exactly. Yeah, it's a funny it's a funny little balance there. So that's a you know, that's a very touching movie, you know, for for myself, for a lot of people, you know, it's 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 an emotional film. It's there are definitely comedic moments in there and they they kind of cleanse the palate, but there's some there's some serious stuff there, especially towards the end. Particularly with, you know, you guys, you know, shedding some tears and whatnot. What what was it like to kind of cry together? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, I think with me being around Joel and me being friends with Joel, we're, we're kind of able to, because we're so comfortable around each other. So that, that made it easier. But I'm not sure if that was an idea that we had before we started filming. So I think the crying kind of came in the moment. So from that, we just kind of had to navigate on on camera what joel was doing and how to react so um just getting into and reacting to what joel was doing is kind of how i my character would transfer into into crying himself so definitely um just playing off of joel i think it was how i got um to that point in that scene yeah, that's. I think that's good advice as well. I think is just you know acting is is reacting. You know, see what's see what's coming at you and give something back that's genuine in that in that moment for sure. So one of the scariest moments of that film for me, and it, it must have been scary for you watching him do it. But when he's on that ladder and he's he's climbing up that ladder and he's on the first of all, you're not supposed to go past like the top two rungs on a ladder. I just want <laughs> right, to right. put that as a disclaimer for anybody listening or watching <laughs> the movie in general there there's a little like sign on one of the steps that's like, don't go past this point or whatever. It's just not safe. You know, you're watching him do it. Do you know he's gonna do the stunt? Do you know he's gonna like it, the ladder's gonna fall after he gets up onto the ledge? It must have been a little bit nerve-wracking. You know, that actually 
that scene, I can firmly remember him doing that. And me, like, I was behind the camera, of course, and I, that was, I looked up because I was like, oh my God, Joel just fell off the ladder. Like, I, I, I thought he was, I thought he was going down. But he, he 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 played it off amazing, like so good that I in person had to look away from the camera. I was like, make sure that Joel was okay before we were doing anything else. But yeah, he he actually did it. I I don't know. We you know with when when you do improv, you just kind of go with the flow. So uh, I think that we had the idea for it. I'm not sure if we had the idea for him to like. I can't remember what our idea was that, but I do firmly remember that Joel did that. And I was like, oh, my God, Joel just fell off the ladder because I was definitely worried because it was like the, the, the ground was slanted and we had to put it in a good spot for all that. So, yeah, that I, I that's a good question because I definitely remember thinking, oh, my God, Joel just fell. Yeah, it's like you think you're making one movie and he's making a Jackie Chan movie or a Charlie <laughs> Chaplin movie in his head. And, I know. You know, I he's know. just springing that on you. It's 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 a great moment, but even watching it again, I, I every time I see him step too high in the ladder and just it, it fall, it just makes me cringe a little bit for sure. So some of the scenes, you you guys are very far away from the camera. You guys are on a boat. You guys are out on the ocean, and the camera's just you know back on land just just grabbing you guys from from afar was that a little bit of a thing of like can we leave that camera there i don't know what the geographic location is like or if people were coming through or whatever but you know it it's it's got to be a little bit weird to you know record a scene where you're maybe 100 feet 200 feet further from the camera and you're just kind of trusting that the camera's over there and recording what what were those shots like yeah, I think the biggest worry is the audio because we didn't have the audio. That might have been in the like the the kayak when we were doing that scene, but that that was always Joel's biggest worry. He's like, is the audio running? Are there batteries in the microphones? Because uh, that was definitely the most important. Obviously, behind the camera running and recording, but yeah, that, and, and that's that's Joel's uh, one of Joel's future films island he did a lot of scenes like that and so he i think he already had a good enough experience doing that on his because he was completely alone making that and would would um put the camera in a place and and uh was actually surrounded by people and in this film and forget about everything it we mostly just filmed at the house so we didn't have to worry about people or anything and but it, it was definitely interesting because you kind of, if the camera's not in front of you, you kind of forget. And then it kind of helps you immerse yourself a little bit better into what's happening in the, on like the more reactionary side and not really having to worry about, oh, did we get the scene? It's just, as long as everything's in frame, the audio's good, you just kind of go with the flow and like I said, I think I think it made it a little bit easier that the camera's far to to fully immerse ourselves in the character and, and what was happening in the scene. So did you guys use just the little lavalier microphones for the audio on that film? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's amazing. It it's it's a film where you really feel like you're somewhere and, and you would think like you know, if I was if I was planning to make one of those movies, I was th- I would think like, all right, I got to go around, I got to grab like, you know, nature sounds, or I got to grab like the sounds of like the trees and this, that, and the other. I would overthink it. And you guys just went down with little clip-on microphones, and I feel like I'm in South Carolina. I've never been there before in my life, but it, it's it's amazing what good sound can do. It's amazing what those little lavalier microphones can do for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so Mason, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've heard any episodes before, but we do a little thing on this show called Stupid Questions. Are you, are you ready to be asked some stupid questions? Fire away, Cody. All right. First stupid question: Are you any good at Scrabble? <laughs> I, I am not. I'm not very good at um, putting words together sometimes. So that that scene had a little bit of truth to it. I think so. I, I can't remember with the. I think the scum joke 
that came up naturally. But what we put on the board, that was just like a random idea. But that, that something like that, I would, I would always be asking questions. Oh, is this an actual word if I was playing Scrabble? Are there any board games you are good at? Uh, I'd say I'm better at like card games. Okay. What's your card game of choice? I've been playing Uno a lot. Uno's good. Yeah, you kind of can catch a hot streak on Uno. Oh, yeah. All right, next stupid question. Your name is Mason, yes? Yes. Have you ever laid bricks? Have you ever <laughs> uh, done any masonry? Um, Actually, I think so, yeah. At um, that house in South Carolina, me and my dad did some work on it, and we, we made like a little walkway, and we put some some bricks down on the on the pavement on the ground so yeah that that is i have i'm glad to hear it yeah right you know usually like i i brace for asking somebody a question like that and they're like no it never occurred to me i why would i do that and it's like it's your name sir <laughs> like at least try it out on like a, a weekend or something you know? yeah you gotta dabble man if it's your name right yeah all right so your last name is carter yes <laughs> yeah are you any good at Mario Kart? Oh, yeah. I uh, you know it's been a while since I played it, but you know the uh, Mario Kart sixty four on the Nintendo sixty four. The best one. Yeah, yeah. That was that was my game. I, me and my brother used to play that all the time. Who'd you uh, play as? I my guy was Toad. See, now I know you're a good player. <laughs> <laughs> who was who yours? Well, Toad is Toad's the best. I think Toad's the best in that game. I agree. Ever ever thought of changing the C to a K and and entering some uh, Mario Kart tournaments or anything like that? Uh, I've never ruled that out. That's that doesn't seem like such a bad idea at all. It seems like something to fall back on. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right, next stupid question. Your name is Mason Carter, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Any relation to Jimmy Carter? You know, I don't think so. Sadly, nothing. I don't. I don't think so. He he was a president. Yeah, he he's a good guy, good man. Nothing there. Yeah, I, I I'm not. I don't think so. See, I have to ask because I you know I used a, a name based thing like that on a stupid question a couple episodes ago with the uh, this guy Gage Clift. He's an actor. He's a filmmaker. And he turned out to be related to Montgomery Clift. Really? The uh, the wonderful classic actor. Wow. That And that was just something I pulled out of my, my head just as like a stupid question. And it turned out to be a legitimate, like, good question. That's really cool. Montgomery Clift. So now I always have to ask. Like, I'm not. Yeah, now. Yeah. I'm, I'm never not asking now. That's that's just once it happens uh, once you have to do it. You have to ask. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it, it's it becomes ritual at that point. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. So your name is Mason Carter, right? It is. Any relation to uh, Sean Carter, Jay Z? You know, I uh, that one I'm really not sure. Okay. So I'm, I'm not. Let's 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 give it a maybe. Okay, we'll put that down as a maybe. Yeah, yeah. We'll look into it. We have, you know, independent fact checkers. We can <laughs> we can put something together. Get your people on that. We'll figure it out soon, right? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Next stupid question. Have you have you been recognized for your work in Joel Haver's shorts by a stranger? It has to be a stranger. It can't be someone you knew in high school. It's like, hey, I saw those. It's got to be someone you do not know that recognizes you in the street or something like that. No, that that has not happened. See, I'm really disappointed with these strangers out there because, you know, you're not the first person to say, no, I haven't been stopped. No, I haven't been talked to. I know it's COVID. I know it's the pandemic and everything. I know you you probably got a mask on your face. They're like, is that is that the guy? Is that not the guy? But it is, this is just a little bit of a message to strangers out there. You can still be the first person to stop Joel in the street, tell him you love his work, stop Trent in the street, tell him you love his work, stop Mason in the street, tell him you love his work. It's still out there. You can be that first experience, you know, and I just hope somebody takes advantage of it and obviously is nice about it. You know, obviously <laughs> you don't want the first one to be some guys like, hey, I hate your, your, 
you're moving. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. Then, then you wouldn't want to be coming outside anymore. It's like, oh, man. Yeah, it, it, I would just ruin it forever. It's got to be like a really sweet, genuine thing. It's it, And it needs to be that if you're a stranger listening at home, you know, if you if you self-identify as a as a stranger, as a stranger, <laughs> then then you can still do this. If you're if you're friends with Mason online or anything like that, you are disqualified. You if you if you've ever known him prior, totally total disqualification. You got to be a complete and total stranger. That's what we're going for here. I would say. Would Would you be open to a stranger coming up to you? Are you one of those actors who just uh, you know don't talk to me, don't look at me? Uh, would you Would you embrace it? Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, I, I, you never know in the moment, but. I think I think I'd be open to it. That'd be pretty cool. At least for the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, give give the first guy a great experience, then you can be an asshole to everybody after that if you want to. You know, but just exactly put that. You know, put that in the history books just as a positive experience for somebody. Exactly, exactly. So somebody, uh, it's going to be somebody's day one of these days. All right. Next stupid question: Do you have a favorite? Haver short that you weren't a part of, or 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 something like that, something that really tickles you. Oh, that's a very good question. Mm. There's so many that come to mind, but a favorite. Oh, have you seen any? <laughs> you can you can say if you haven't seen. Them. <laughs> I, I, if you only watch your stuff, that's fine. No, nah, I, I try to watch as as much as Joel's stuff and and your stuff and all my friends stuff as I can, but man, I, I don't uh, save it. Oh, I, I, oh, I'm always so tickled by the one that Joel does. It's, it's like one of the black and white films. And it's like the one where he's British and he's like going to the grocery store to get beans for his mom. Yes. I, I, I love Joel's accent in, in that one and all his different characters. I, I think, that that's got to be definitely one of my top top favorites cuz i i just love Joel's inflection in some of his words and and just the, the drama in that one that one that one's good yeah it's it's, it's a very dramatic bean buying experience <laughs> exactly do you have any favorite beans do you do you like beans do you it was it the beans that brought you into that one or i think i think so you know Beans are good. They make you they make you toot every once in a while, give you a little gas. So, I mean, who doesn't love beans? I, I can only agree. <laughs> I, I like black beans. I like uh, pinto beans. I like I like all sorts of beans. I, I, yeah, yeah. Black beans are good. You know the um, the bushes baked beans. Those are those are pretty fire. If you got a nice little summer barbecue on your hands and you you get the mac and cheese on the plate, you. Yeah, little bushes baked beans. Yeah, have you have you had the uh, the Heinz beans, the uh, the British beans, where it's a, it's just the little white beans in the tomato sauce? Have you had that one? I have not. Oh, that's good stuff. If if you're ever over in England, that's what they you know. If if you hear beans on toast, that's what they're talking about, and it, it is it's good eating. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to try it out. Yeah, it's in the blue blue can. Heinz baked beans, good stuff. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try that for sure. All right, so this is I mean this is venturing into non stupid question territory. This next question, uh oh. But are you? I know everybody <laughs> listening at home is like, well, now I can turn off the episode. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, is there anything you're working on on your own, or or projects that that you have in mind that that you want to do, be a part of, do one day? Are you are you working on any solo stuff? No, nothing solo as of now. Um, you know, I, I've kind of been thinking about doing some stuff on my own, and then I'll get to thinking about it, and I don't know where to start, and then it, I, I'm not ruling it out, and I definitely want to. I want to make some more features. So th- I think that that's one of my goals. So e- e- if I do it with Joel or maybe you or whoever, uh, that would be nice. But I'm, I'm going to try to come up with some, something to do, uh, solo. But right now I don't have anything that I'm working on. Well, I'd love to work with you. Yeah, yeah, we should. You know, if I, if I ever have anything that you'd be right for, you know, I'm absolutely calling you for it because 
that would just be a lot of fun. We we did a short together once. We did the uh, the O word. Yeah, that that one was a good one, and that that was inspired by somebody you knew, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a friend. It, it just like it was like clockwork. You know, if you <laughs> if you mentioned something, that was the reaction. That was the exact pro, pro, uh, progression of the reaction of the. <laughs> the O word and like, I'm gonna have to look that up and all that stuff. Like, it was just like, without fail, you could just do it for your own amusement and they would react like that. It was just perfect. Yeah. That's so good. So good. Yeah. I remember doing that one. Every time you said Ruby Tuesdays, it was just, it was very hard not to crack up. That, that one, that one was the one that got me every time too, just cause it's so like, just so weird like who, who i never think about ruby like i get that way i think stuff is so funny if i just you just never hear anybody talk about it so that's one of those things just like jesus like that's a thing yeah just the idea of somebody getting into ruby tuesdays exactly <laughs> like oh man I'm, I'm i've been really on like a ruby tuesdays kick <laughs> i gotta i gotta tell you about this uh place have you heard about this <laughs> Exactly, a hidden gym. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've never, I've never been to Ruby Tuesdays. Have you been to one? I don't, I don't know if I have. Well, you're, you're royalty there by now, I'm sure. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think all of us can can hold some crowns. I always figure like places that don't get mentioned much, it must get circulated around when they like do ever get mentioned whatsoever in any context. So like for all you know. You could be famous to like every Ruby Tuesdays employee for that line. You just you, they just send you around in like the group chat for like all the people, that, the servers there and whatnot. You never know. Just just like every every Tuesday, they're like Happy Tuesday, coworkers. Just shout out to shout out to that one video that that thought about us. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're your old hat by now. They've seen the video a hundred times. They get sent it a lot. Yeah, it, it's on. They got a TV and it's just always constantly running in the restaurant. <laughs> All right, Mason. Well, it was great talking to you. And uh, I look forward to more of your work with, work with Joel. I look forward to your work in general, whether it's with me or with, with whoever, whether it's solo stuff, who knows. I enjoy watching you, sir. You're a very genuine actor. You're you, you have a great presence, good, and you're just a good dude in general. You know. Thank you. Man. Breaking the fourth wall a little bit, but like those at home, this is a good man that I'm talking to. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I, I appreciate that a lot, and uh, I love that you're doing this podcast. I think you have such a good podcasting voice, so I'm happy to be a part of it. Ah, oh, thank you. Some of it's the microphone. Oh, okay. Shout out. Some of it's, uh, you know, I got I got a really good broadcast mic. I enjoy using it. It does wonders for my voice, but uh, it does. It does. It, it's fun. Get you get. That's my advice to you at home. Get yourself a nice broadcast mic. Just talk into it. You'll you'll have some fun. I, yeah, I think there's a confidence boost in in, in hearing your your voice just sound all girthy and beefy. Girthy, yeah, yeah, beefy. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we, we'll we'll go out on girthy and beefy. Love it. Mason, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for talking. Thank you, Cody. You too. See you soon. Appreciate it. Thank you all for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, $2 per month, killthelionfilms.com. That's the best way to support us. You support the show and you support my film studio, Kill the Lion Films. See you soon.